Ladies, gentlemen, I am Yusril, the game is Star Trek Online Agents of Yesterday. Welcome once again to the Triple Time Warp. It is the 18th of May 2016 and unavoidably this video is going to have spoilers in it. So if you don't want those, now would be a good moment to go and watch something else. I've got a good video involving a kamikaze AR and something of a rampage in World of Warships. Link will be in an annotation somewhere. Okay, everyone who's still here, welcome back to Taurus 2. As I have said, this is the 18th of May 2016. There have been a few patches. They fixed the rifle equip bug, which is good. It no longer acts as a complete showstopper. Had a bit of an issue with one of the doctors being extremely reluctant to pick up a phaser rifle, but that seems to have resolved itself as well. I'm not quite sure if that's cryptic or if I just got lucky. What might well be a triple specific problem is that it's recycling instances quite notably. You'll see that we have two Ensign Okamuras here. We've also got true Crewman Skiels and Crewman Flores is over here looking remarkably unimpaled. Hey, what can I say? Maybe those red shirts are good for something after all. However, we are done on Taurus 2. We have had our sudden bout of Klingons down here on the ground, and now it's time to get off this rock before anything else goes wrong and we wind up setting light to the fuel. And I'm really, really hoping that somebody remembered to gas this thing up before we left. Let's get out of here. We did check the fuel tanks, right? And welcome back. You'll notice that the shuttle's not moving in this cutscene. Also note the NCC-1500 designation on the nacelles. We've seen the game use player ships in cutscenes, so I'm a little surprised that they aren't bothering with that here. But hey, maybe there's a technical limitation. Certainly the uh, game is capable of doing it, and the game has the data to work with you. Specify your ship name at character creation. Admittedly, the number is hidden from you, but hey, it's there if you choose to look for it. So, let's just talk to Ensign Mears. And so happy to see a shuttle bay. Yes, you're welcome. Why is the red alert siren going off in the background? Hmm, couldn't have done it without you. Well, actually, all you did was run off, almost get yourself captured, did get your away team captured, and almost got them eaten, and then you had the good sense to come and get me to clean up the mess, which I suspect is going to be a recurring theme throughout this campaign, but we shall see. Thank you, anyway. And now... Oh, yep, we appear to have a slight problem. And that door should be opening during the cutscene to reveal a Klingon running past. Admittedly, he had a D Romulan disruptor rifle during the uh, first part of... Do Let me retry that. He had a Romulan disruptor rifle during the last version of that cutscene. This time, the door just didn't open at all, so maybe that's a fix. Also, I note that we have also contracted amnesia on the way up. Hey, shuttlecraft, maybe those fumes induce amnesia, I don't know. But now they're merely survivors. Also... I'm not sure what this is. Some obscure martial art? An early form of Mokbara? Um, the Lesser Rigelian Three Mating Dance? Who knows? Who cares? We have some Klingons to get off this ship. That's the important thing. So, hey guys. Ah, you've got guns now. Excellent. Hit the comp panel. And we've been boarded. Yay! And oh dear. Recommendations? Kill them all. What else? Start with the engineering lab. Tarsi, Miz. Looks like we're going to pacify some Klingons. Doors open and frying pans into fires. Yeah, you don't say. Well, you help these guys out. I'm just going to... No, I'm not going to shoot me some Klingons. Also note old school disruptor. Um, also note that Mears has apparently got a very interesting phaser rifle there. And Tarsi is NPC state now and... <clears throat> Excuse me. Really needs to work on her aim. Damn it, Ensign, have you not heard of friendly fire? Ye gods, the Klingons are over there, woman. Right, come on. Let's go and get this done. Secure the research lab. Do 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 do. Uh, okay, yep, so we're taking a left here. Thank you so much. Um, where are you? Who are you? Who cares? Hand me a Klingon. There we are, in the back. Best way. Now we'll just duck. He's got a photon grenade. Handy knockback, but there you go. Yoink! He's out of it. Next! 
Oh, more Klingons. Looks like there are four in the room. So, one, two, three, and four. And wow, they made a mess in here, didn't they? For some reason, the primary plasma conduits are rooting through the engineering lab. Fine, I will stare at the console until it mysteriously does my bidding. There we go. Vulcan stares, ladies and gentlemen. Good for telepathic contact, implanting suggestions, and apparently making Klingons bounce around like mad bunny rabbits. Down you go. Thank you. And now let's take the rest of this room. So... Oop. Well, it's not quite in the back, but hey, she still goes down fast enough. And, ooh, disrupt a sniper rifle, eh? Uh, there we go. Worth noting that the Klingon bolts are either so fast that I can't actually see them, or they're semi-transparent, which is a little... I'm actually going to let this guy shoot me a bit, just to get a good look at the uh, animation, because... Yeah, I mean, it's kind of okay. They've tightened up up a bit. There was a much more noticeable distortion effect around it, but that's enough from you. Down you go. Thank you. That's what we get for trying to steal my guns. Next stop, main engineering, whereby we probably ought to be careful because, you know, it's engineering. There's a warp core. It's full of things that react badly to being shot. Ensign, hi. Wonderful. You've actually been useful. Now, you two hold here, and can I borrow that super advanced plasma rifle? No. Nope. Nice of you to stand guard, though. Thank you. Right, Commander! It's just you and me. And... Ooh, is that a new power icon for him? Not sure. It's certainly not the traditional... Yes, it is! It is, it is, it is. Shame it's going through his headset. Uh, excuse me. Little bit busy at the moment. Hyperspray. Thank you. Probably shouldn't let him get random shots like that. Now if you excuse me, kindly fall over and die. This is what I get for stopping and staring at graphics rather than actually, you know, killing the enemy. Bridge to engineering, please respond. Excellent. I didn't even have to pick up the phone. Are you sure you're not descended from a guy named Bane? Hmm. Right, check the power relays for the weapons. Right, this is going to be the tactical specific objective. So poke, prod, poke, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, blue. Excellent. Charge of the phasers. Um, what he actually means is, come to the bridge. Like so. Hey guys, I'm off to the bridge. Can you two manage to stand guard over an empty room and not get our warp core blown up? Excellent, thank you. Oh, and Ensign, I want that phaser rifle. Starfleet will be interested in how you got a minus 100 year old prototype. So, welcome back to the bridge. We have an incoming transmission. And because apparently I am the communications officer, the away team leader, the bridge bunny, and the resident marine, let's open the channel. Ah, Captain Kor, we meet our nemesis. Didn't he show up in an episode of the original series? Yeah, I'll have to go and check that. Memory's a little hazy on the point, so... Captain, talk to me. Right, they'll think twice before they try to board the... No, they won't even think once before they try to board the ship again. Just as soon as they can clone a few more disposable ensigns and get another shuttlecraft. Still, we get a couple of bits of gear as before. And Tarsi... Okay, looks like she is pretty much fixed. But that's a... As I said, that's a very nice setup for a tactical officer. High yield 1, overload 2, spread 3, and then omega 3 later on. 23C Photon Grenade 1? I think that description needs a little bit of a tweak somehow, but there you go. Continue. Uh, we have Tarsi as our bridge officer, and let's take the helm. Incidentally, I have a suspicion that one of the giveaways that you're in a used instance is that this helm seat is empty when you first start the tutorial. Just a thought. However, one helm is taken. And here we are. We are in space! And two Klingon power signatures, so we need to get close enough to scan the power signatures. While we're on the topic, as I said, the game does know the name and number it's got to work with. You can alter them as well, of course. Uh, although not in space, which is a little awkward. Still, let's get close enough to scan the beacon. Scan, 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 scan the beacon. Right. And they are using random technobabble to get through the other random technobabble. It's clever. Yes, sir. Can't we just pull the plug and nick the important parts? Right. Use your torpedo. It would help perhaps if you said target something first, but there you go. 
Fires the torpedoes. Yay, it didn't quite work. Happily, we have more than one torpedo on board. Fires the second torpedo. Boomski. More Boomski. And perhaps a word of warning there about don't get too close to things about to blow up. Just saying. However, you must be within 10 o'clock, so this is your introduction to Full Impulse. Mentioning the shift R shortcut would be a good idea here. But we'll just quickly skid down and then use your phaser beams. Again, mention that you've got to target something to fire at it. Okay. Fire the phasers. Fire all the phasers. And with the shields gone, fire the torpedoes. Only needed one that time because of the bleed through from the phasers, but there we go. Right, and now we have an incoming hail. So, answer. And a Tellerite captain. Interestingly, he's not using 60s style Tellerite face structures. He's got the modern, for want of a better term. Still, shields buckling won't last long. Hold on, Captain, we're on our way. Full impulse. This is where we meet the first of the new clear ships, a D5 Raptor. Of course, D5, D7, and the other designations, I believe, came out of the Starfleet Battles game. Now, Interplay did a very unique design for the D5. They had the wings fold back into a single nacelle. Cryptic haven't gone for that. They've gone for a TOS version of the Raptor. So you'll notice it's a much more primitive style of ship, but no matter... It'll blow up just as pretty, and it's got a kind of traditional 60s charm to it. However, we still want to blow it up, so let's go to work. Come on. Unshielded, that's fine. So, loop back. Cut to half throttle just for a moment. And then since he's going to squirt out in front of the torpedo tubes. Fires a torpedo. Also set that for auto-fire as well. Boom! Bye bye Klingon. Also notice that we have got evasive manoeuvres fairly early on. I didn't think we got that quite so early on the regular characters. So he needs a jump start. Fine. Transfers the energy to the freighter. There we go. Just showing off the lighting a bit. And thank you for everything. Good luck with the... the, the you're not going to help? Fine. See you later. And the Ensign has made some modifications to the torpedo... She's talking about High Yield 1 here, of course, but um, I have to admit a certain moment of, is this going to blow us up? Right. Approach the Klingons, and again, mention Shift R here. That would be a good way to go. And we have another D5 Raptor. This time it's shielded. So, fires the phasers. Green disruptor bolts from the Klingons, so at least they're staying consistent there. Now, support shield should be about to collapse. There we go. Prep high impulse, then realise he's going to get his bow shields round. So we'll just collapse those. And the moment he comes round... Yes, 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 I'm sure. And there we go. Boom. More Klingon ships on the long-range sensors. Are they on the starboard bow? Who knows? Intercept course, lock weapons, fire at will. And, ah, the Enterprise is in trouble. Acknowledge Enterprise en route to your position now. Let's go bail out the glory, boys. And girls. Uh -huh, the cub comes to fight beside... Yes, yes, yes. Very fancy. You have to admit, he's managing a good line in poetry. So, next new Klingon ship here. Of course, we've got the Enterprise, who is doing pretty well for herself, all things considered, since she's up against a D9. This, I think, is a new design from Cryptic. And you can see, again, it's essentially a tos up Negvar, which isn't a bad thing, relatively blocky even compared to the standard Negvars. And some detailing, it's, it's got that nice 60s vibe to it. So we'll hook down behind Enterprise, focus fire onto the aft shield as well. And there we go, so just pummel one shield arc, knock it down, and once the torpedo tubes come round and this shield starts to collapse, doesn't matter. Looks like we're both going to be firing into his starboard shield for a bit. There we go. Come on. You're going down, Sonny Jim. Not you, Kirk. The other Sonny Jim. There we are. High yield torpedoes straight into unshielded hull. Pull up. 
They got the detailing right. NCC 1701, the original and only. Look back, she's got off torpedoes as well. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. The TOS Constitution has that second weapon slot. And just as High Yield comes back, stuffing another torpedo. High Yield's back. We'll get the next shot in a second. He is going to just about get his port shield around, so let's just kink forwards. No obvious bugs coming in here, by the way. It's just kind of fun, really. Decent scrap, even if you don't know what you're doing. There we are. High Yield away, and boom. And Core legs it, swearing vengeance upon Kirk's lackey. I'm... I'm sorry, Vlacky? Bah. Glory boys on constitutions. Ah, Spock, good to see you. Thank you for your assistance. There are no vessels remaining in the sector. Wonderful, safe travels. And we may eventually cash in on this favour. Who knows? Right, Starfleet Command wants us back for a debrief on the mess. Lay in, of course, at the astonishing speed of time warp factor three. Engage. Um, apparently we have two Enterprises, but that's just a little bit of clean-up that needs to be done. Oh, um. Right, so, welcome to Earth Orbit and Space Dock, which is out in the distance. We'll get a better look at it later on. For the moment, however, welcome to the inside of Space Dock, and we get a chance to meet the Glory Hounds themselves. The best of the best, unless you're... I don't know, saving their backsides from Klingon battleships? Hmm, maybe. Anyhow, back on topic. As I said, you can change the ship's numbers and they've tweaked the range slightly. So, of course, you can have anything from 1,000 to 1,999. Now, first things first is a little bit of a bug I caught earlier. They might have fixed this. So, we're going to try setting an invalid number. Right, so, four, six, seven, and go. Bingo, there we are. So look at the lower hand corner. 91002 to 999999. That, of course, is the uh, modern, regular STO era's number range. The other thing I want to test, just to see if Cryptic had the foresight to make this impossible, is if you can do this, because you know someone's going to try it. Ah, yes, they thought of that. <laughs> okay, did they think of Defiant as well? 1764. Hmm, easy test. Four, and check. Oh, nope, they allowed it. 1764, so you can have potentially a Defiant. Of course, I have blown my rename, but I think Defiant is reserved. Yep, restricted words, so the name's reserved, but the number isn't. That's maybe something cryptic need to just tweak a little. Of course, at that rate, they'd have to do 1700 to 1711 as well, but let's meet the gang and nerd out a bit. Obviously, there's Mears, who has apparently been transferred to Earth Space Dock. On the bright side, you don't get spears thrown at you, but hey, you never know. Right, who else have we got? Random Starfleet Denson and Bones Scotty. Right, let's start fanboying, shall we? Um, McCoy first. Not sure if they're going to get to voice him, if anyone, because of course DeForest Kelly is dead. But you never know, they might find a good vocal match. Not sure if it's just the lighting. He looks a bit more gaunt than he did during the series. Cheekbones are a little more hollow? Mm, well, cheeks are a little more hollow, not sure. Anyhow, yeah, I'm, I'll keep that in mind, Doctor. And then, you know, this feels like this isn't the first time I've given you some advice. Temporal shenanigans, ladies and gentlemen. This may be a reference to the Klingon War arc. I don't know if we're actually going to end up with that in our campaign as a TOS ca faction character, because, of course, we will meet McCoy during the course of that. On the other hand, I'm not sure whether we're before or after it at this point, so can't say that I know anything about that, and McCoy is clearly smelling a time-travelling rat. Anyhow, you're welcome for the help. Don't mention it, Doctor. Don't worry, he never will. Enterprise has a reputation to maintain, after all. Scotty, who will of course be voiced by James Doohan's son. Jimmy Doohan, of course, is departed, sadly. And it's not every day one walks away from a brawl with the Klingons. Well, no. I mean, there was that time when, what was it? You started that bar brawl over? Hmm. Oh, wait, no. Remind me, nobody started that bar brawl. The Klingons started. Have we met before? I 
don't think so. Again, we run into Scotty during the Klingon Warrock. be interesting to see if Cryptic have the Doohan Jr. go back and revoice those lines as well, not to mention tweak the models. However, must be his imagination. Uh, no, no, it's not your imagination, and apparently you're not quite as sharp as McCoy. As for the rest, Uhura, what do we got? Well, for some reason she's still wearing the Feinberg receiver, but hey, who knows, maybe she just needs to stay plugged in. But will they try anything like that again soon? Yeah, they probably will, and yeah, of course Captain Core's going to try to settle a grudge. He's a Klingon, that's what they do. We'll just leave him another grudge to add to the pile, and if he wants a rematch, we'll be ready. Sulu, anything to say? Okay, some fine flying. Well, maybe, maybe. I hope I'll get the chance, because let's face it, better than the uh, destroyer I've got at the moment. Sorry, utility cruiser. At least I've got more than one torpedo. And Pavel, what have we got? 2268, a Rigelium Flame Rose de de a Oh, right, so apparently we were at the Academy together, if not quite in the same class. Very cold, almost like Siberian winters. Yes, that incident probably almost got us expelled, but there you go. Still, it establishes that we're kind of Chekhov's generation rather than Scotty, McCoy and the like. Nice bit of background to have there. Right, next stop, Captain Garrett's office, which handily is right next to the bar. I'm not saying TOS flag officers had their priorities straight, but TOS flag officers had their priorities straight. And here's Spock, who... Lieutenant Commander, remind me to check that. I thought he was a full commander during the TOS era. I could be wrong. As I said, I had to go back and double check. Captain Garrett, what have you got for me? A cutscene, apparently. And some good news, sir. This is where I get the ship, isn't it? Okay, so congratulations. I'm guessing you didn't call me to brag about being kicked upstairs so you couldn't do any more damage thanks to your incompetence at helming a starship. And yep, we've got the ship. Huzzah! I'm sure it will be. Certainly it was in better hands than yours during that scrap with the Klingons. And, oh, uh, well, that's your job. Incidentally, this... They need to tweak the focus. I'm not sure it's the Matt Grain effect. Spock, what's the hurry? Come back. Are you just here to suck up to the new captain, just in case Kirk finally has enough of you? Oh, right, he's monologuing. Let me just go and get something to drink. Um, I wonder, are they going to try and get Zach Quinto back to do this? Who knows? They're going to need a good Spock impersonation, that's for sure. They're also going to need to tweak the finger modelling if they're going to get the camera that close to it, but there you go. Meanwhile, the two of us are staring at him with the expression of, well, what did you do that for? Right, so welcome to Space Dock proper. So, pick up all the veteran rewards, titles, etc. And our first stop is going to be the various bits and pieces on Earth Space Dock. So, we need to speak to the tailor, we need to speak to ship customization, and then we need to get a shuttlecraft from somewhere... So, interestingly, we do not appear to have this on our... Ah, there we go. Okay, so let's go have a rummage around Earth Space Dock. So we have the transport room. Don't have the option to just beam back to the ship, interestingly enough. That may be a restriction to stop us leaving until we've done everything we need to aboard Space Dock and picked up the next mission. Now then, we've got the bar, the Glory Hounds have legged it, but we've got a decent little view of the shuttle bay. Granted, it's not the full majesty of the docking bay, but hey, maybe Space Dock doesn't have that yet. They might have rebuilt it. Well, they did rebuild it several times. The exterior design was very definitely different. So let's see, it's this way for the tailor and all the various other bits and pieces. So, tailor. Right, so let's have a chat. Okay, so we have our default lighting, space dock lighting, Kronos lighting, and of course new Romulus lighting if you like everything. Actually, that's kind of more useful, isn't it? Um, 
default lighting's a bit too much in shadow for some reason. However, it does let you judge things. Anyhow, modifies the uniform because, you know, rank stripes are important. So, uniform. Okay, TOS. Okay, so rank none. Now that's interesting because we start out at as a lieutenant junior grade, we're promoted to lieutenant by the time we get to this point, so I should really have the second option. All I've got is the single interrupted stripe for a junior grade lieutenant. Still, we'll stick with that, purchase that, and exit. Is there anything else we need? Well, yes, I'd like you to progress the mission, please. Taylor. Okay, talk, there we go, and right, so you have to talk with him, you can't simply adjust your item. That might well be a good thing, I don't know if you can set it so it automatically hits that option. Anyhow, show me what's available, there we go. Right, next stop, the ship vendor to claim a shuttlecraft. Let's see what we've got. Lots and lots of phases, apparently, and ship selector is over here, customizations there, and vendor... Tellarite, gimme. Again, modern style Tellarite rather than TOS style that we had in the character creator, so I'm a little surprised from that. Get me a new sh starship. Uh, browse selection, now we have got, well, we've only got three to choose from at the moment, it's a little bit awkward. And yeah, constitution class, mm hmm. An old ship, and a few have recently been put back into. Yeah, that, of course, is the modern description. I don't know whether that can actually be tweaked, because, of course, it's got to stay current right the way through. So if you write a 2268 onwards description, it's going to be a smidge awkward. However, let's pick up our Class F shuttle, which I can't buy because I do not have one energy credit. However, it has handily credited us for the mission, but that's still something that Cryptic needs to take care of, either by giving us a token that we can use, or by giving us one energy credit. One or the other, doesn't really matter which. Also be a good moment to introduce us to the remote hail option to turn in a mission. Wonderful, so I noticed. So, being a social captain, etc, 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 and still no energy credit, so still no shuttlecraft. Never mind, we can pick up the Type 1 phaser, a few batteries, and of course access to the first proper mission in the Shadow of Cestus, which will form the basis of the next Tribble Time Warp. Let's just see what we've got to look at here. So, Agents of Yesterday in the Shadow of Cestus, Painful Omens, Return to Babel, okay, Tangled Webs, Caleb 4. Right, okay, so in fact it looks like it's only one, two, three, four, five, six missions at the moment, and then we plow straight into the Klingon War Arc, and New Assignment is your Temple Agent, which is when we get into the modern STO. Isht. Okay, I'm hoping we're going to see more time travel, more 23rd century. They do say that we're going to end up in the 28th century, but arguably, of course, the current Temporal War Arc takes us there. So, hmm, hopefully we're going to see more from Crypt, because otherwise this expansion could turn out to be rather light on new content. But that's a problem for later. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Yuzral. That has been the Triple Time Warp for the 18th of May 2016. And until next time, farewell.